One of the worst and most horrific executioners who worked inside of London was Jack Ketch, and he was responsible for one of the most brutal executions to have ever occurred. During the execution of James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth, Ketch brutalised the victim and his actions almost led to a riot breaking out upon Tower Hill, and many people wanted Ketch on the executioner's block next. But King James II had ordered the execution of the man who tried to usurp him, but he would never have expected what happened to James Scott. Born on the 9th of April 1649, James Scott was the son of King Charles II and Lucy Walters, his mistress. But James was born in the Netherlands, but as an illegitimate son, he was not able to succeed the English throne and Scottish throne. He could not prove rumours that his parents had married each other. He thought his parents were married and he claimed to have evidence about this, but the king, Charles II, later said how he was only married to his Queen Catherine. But James was kidnapped at one point by the king's men and he was then sent to Paris. But on the 14th of February 1663, at the age of 12, He was taken to England and was made the Duke of Monmouth and was also given the titles the Earl of Doncaster and Baron Scott of Tyndale. He would then be made a Knight of the Garter and then days after his 14th birthday he married a woman known as Anne Scott and he took his wife's surname and the pair became the Duke and Duchess of Buccleuch. But James Scott was a popular young man and he was a prominent Protestant and he was in a bitter rivalry with the king's brother, the Duke of York, James, who would then be named the heir to Scott's father's throne. The Duke of York was his uncle, and he was also a Catholic, which caused a problem, but at the age of 16, Scott was part of the English fleet, and he was made a cavalry group captain. He rose throughout the ranks of the military, and during the Third Anglo-Dutch War, he commanded 6,000 soldiers but he was then made the Lord Lieutenant of the East Riding of Yorkshire and the Governor of Kingston-upon-Hill. He was a very skilled soldier and commander, and he was given many more titles. But Charles II stated that all military orders should be taken to his son first to be checked, and James Scott became the main force behind the army and navy and the armed forces. He continued to fight and when he came home he was placed in control of an army who put down the Scottish conveyancer army and rebellion. But the English people saw him as a very popular figure, but there was an attempt to kill King Charles II and James, and he was forced to go into exile in the Netherlands, and his supporters got together in the Hague. But a rebellion was planned in Holland to work alongside a Scottish rebellion, and there were many areas of England who planned to rebel and rise up in favour of James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth. The target of the Monmouth Rebellion was James II, the king and successor of Charles II, who was coronated following James Scott's father's death. But James II was a Catholic convert, and many across England were worried about the Protestant religion and Monmouth was a Protestant, and they turned to him to get rid of James II on the throne. Many believed that Scott was the legitimate heir to Charles II and he himself wanted to become the king and he thought he would be able to seize the throne following his uprising. A rebellion was to break out and Monmouth sold a lot of his belongings to fund this and he sailed for England on the 30th of May 1685. He was backed up by many weapons and men and he landed in Dorset and 300 men gathered at Lyme Regis to begin the assault on the throne. But King James II had received reports of the plot, and he was informed of Monmouth's landing. More people volunteered to support him, and his army then numbered around 1,000. They travelled through Dorset and were met by 1,200 royalist soldiers, and he collected more men in Somerset, and then had a force of around 6,000, as they went to different towns to denounce the king. Monmouth said he was the rightful king, but a battle erupted, known as the Battle of Sedgemoor. His forces and the Royalist army met on the 6th of July 1685, and this was the last clear-cut pitched battle between two armies on English soil. 
Monmouth's forces were disorganised and they could not defeat the Royalists, and because of this his forces were decimated and around 2,700 were killed. For every one Royalist soldier, 100 of Monmouth's men were killed, and he then fled the battlefield, but two days later he was caught. Parliament then sentenced Monmouth to death as a traitor, passing an act of attender, and there was no trial. Monmouth tried to beg for his life and said he would become a Catholic, but James II showed him no mercy. It was said that James, the Duke of Monmouth, has in a hostile manner invaded the kingdom and the said Duke of Monmouth be convicted and attained of high treason and that he suffer pain of death. But he was then taken to the Tower of London for some time before his execution was arranged. On the morning of his execution, James Scott dressed in clean stockings and a fresh shirt and lace scarf, and he wore a grey suit with black, and he was also dressed in a long periwig, which was the fashion. His wife came to see him, and he told her to look after his children, and the children also saw him before he died. Scott was then taken on the short walk to Tower Hill, and the scaffold had been prepared for him, and there were many guards around the scaffold guarding against possible rescue attempts due to his popularity. As the Duke of Monmouth climbed the scaffold, he saw a huge crowd that were there to witness his execution. But also on the scaffold was Jack Ketch, who is remembered as history's most botching and worst executioner. When he arrived on the scaffold, Monmouth told Ketch to do his work well, and he also said little to the executioner after this. But he then turned to Ketch and said the unnerving utterance of, Here are six guineas for you. Pray do your business well. Do not serve me as you did my Lord Russell. I have heard you struck him three or four times. If you give me two strokes, I promise I will not stir. So Ketch's reputation had reached the nobility, and he was a blundering axeman, but his execution of Monmouth went much worse. Following the conversation, Monmouth took off his wig and waistcoat, and he refused to wear a blindfold. He turned to Ketch and asked if he could feel the axe, and then he claimed this was not sharp enough, but Ketch then reassured him and got ready. Ketch was clearly rattled and unnerved, and as he swung the axe down onto the Duke of Monmouth's neck, it hit the side of his neck, and Monmouth then looked up in shock and in pain. He was not beheaded. The second swing made a slightly bigger cut, but this was not fatal, and the third swing missed completely. With this, Ketch lost heart and threw down his axe and cried, God damn me, I can do no more. My heart fails me, I cannot do it. The crowd, though, turned and they threatened to kill Ketch if he did not do better. They expected a standard of executioner during executions and Ketch was not hitting this. But he picked up the axe and it took three further blows to kill Monmouth. His head, though, was still attached. Ketch then brutally pulled out his butcher's knife and cut through Monmouth's head, and his head then rolled onto the floor. The reputation of Jack Ketch was ruined forever, and the body of James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth, was then taken back into the Tower of London, where he was laid to rest inside of the Tower's chapel. But at the time, it was believed Monmouth's portrait was never painted, and because of this, officials tried to sew his head back onto his body and they then painted his head and tried to make him look more lifelike. But James Scott's execution was brutal and horrific and he is remembered today as a rebel whose execution was one of the worst in history. Thank you for watching and support please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.